hello guys welcome back to amstein tv it's yet another video and we are going to be discussing about previous video that we have posted for some time now and we have gotten so many feedback we are here today to clarify some doubt and answer some questions that were asked during that video and what is that video all about it is all about why so many africans americans have nigerian ancestry it's very important as we have it all on our show that is the video as you can see why so many africans americans have nigerian ancestry so now we are going to first look at how this issue all started to this point in time and from there we are going to look at some of the points of views given by different personalities from different parts of the world as this uh, topic is concerned and if you are there watching you can as well drop your own points of view in the comment section uh, let's see what it looks like before we start this journey we are going to talk a little bit about slavery and slave trade in africa when we talk about slavery and slave trade we all know it was some sort of a migration process which was how we are going to explain in this uh, video so just stay tuned and let's see what it was all about as we can say, uh, slavery in African history is a systematic and imperative history of slavery in Africa from its earliest manifestation through to the early 20th century. When slavery in most uh, parts of the continent had ceased to exist, it reconstructs the processes that led to the consolidation of slavery with the border goal of understanding as best we can so the live experience and the life experience of slaves throughout the book we integrate an analysis of the personal and relational aspect of slavery between masters and the slave so into a border examination of slavery as an institution we focus on especially on the way slavery emerged and changed over time as an institution so about africa as it have often made the study of slavery difficult in particular imagination the african past before 20th century is often portrayed as a fundamentally rural isolated unspoiled simple and egalitarian facet slavery was real as we can see why slaves were not exploited as slaves but rather became part of the african families in other cases africa is portrayed as little more than the home to unknowable savage tribes gleefully waging war only to sacrifice or sell their victims so an important purpose of slavery in african history is to present africa africans and slavery in a more realistic and accurate way by so doing african was historically diverse indeed africans would not have though of a uh, uh, thought of themselves as African until quite recently. Before, that wasn't uh, possible. That is before the 20th century. The most important local allegiances were to kingship groups, religious orders, occupational groups, villages, cities, or states, among many other possibilities. So Africans, created cities, armies, politics, and religions over the courses of the centuries. Although African economies are commonly portrayed as subsistence 
oriented or fundamentally concerned with the redistribution of goods and resources over time as part of the continent were increasingly oriented toward production and market exchange. People in some regions use currencies in the form of cowries, shares. For example, why groups of merchants sought actively to profit via the exchange of wood, we also saw it in that manner. Having gotten a vivid, uh, clear idea about what slavery and slave trade was all about in Africa, we take you straight to the real questions why so many Africans, Americans, have Nigerian ancestry before coming back to look at the commentaries from the previous video, both positive and negative. Now, why so many Africans, Americans have Nigerian ancestry? We got our information, our research from a bias and a base relief of shackle enslaved people and the world of the Siriki Abbas Slave Museum in Badegri, Lagos, Nigeria. During the period of transatlantic slave trade, more than 12.5 million enslaved persons were shipped from Africa to the Americas, with about 3.5 million of them from Nigeria. So if we have a bigger question today, why majority of the Africans Americans do find their ancestry route towards Nigeria. This is the answers we are giving it to you. Today, there are communities of people with Nigerian ancestry, mostly in Brazil, Cuba, and Jamaica, who have retained some sort of their ancestral belief and traditions. We also have people who have testified that after carrying out their DNA tests from different sources, for example, like 23 and me, they have testified with the percentages of their DNA result being from Nigeria. That is a clear proof that we have gotten enough result from our videos confirming the idea to be true. Why some, I don't know what they think happens to debunk the fact that it is not true. We are going to see it after the vivid explanation of the clear facts. By so doing, in the largest DNA study of people of Africa, ancestry in the Americas, researchers found an over representations of Nigerian genetic ancestry in the United States and Latin American compared to the proportion of enslaved people shipped to these places from regions within modern day Nigeria. It's really a clear fact to indicate that. Why the finds uh, from the genetic study are largely supported by established narratives and historic records of the transatlantic slave trade. There were also inconsistencies in the research and in the movement as well. The researchers put forward a few and a new narrative explaining the variations in African ancestry in the Americas and how these variations were shaped by the transatlantic and later intra-American slave trade whose impact was only recently understood. So the study which involved the DNA of 50,281 people of African descent in the United States, Latin America, and Western Europe was carried out by the Consumer Genetics Company. That is 23 and me. The genetic data was analyzed against historical records of over 36,000 transatlantic slave trade voyages that happened between 1492 and the early 19th century. All that done, it's gearing toward why 
these happenings took place. We keep on moving as we see the overrepresentation of Nigerian ancestry is said to be a result of intra American slave trade between the British, Caribbean, and mainland Americas. So, previously, genetic studies have shown that African Americans in the United States have more African ancestry from populations that live near present-day Nigeria than from populations that live elsewhere in the Atlantic Africa, Western and West Central Africa, all around. And we have seen different parts of Africa as we are going to be seeing from the feedback given by people whom this video have concerned and they have given a vivid, clear explanation of what happened. We have gotten a, a DNA uh, result from Congo, other part of Central Africa that is showing the, uh, that some Americ African Americans are tracing their DNA throughout that, those nations. So now, this is uh, what we call and we have it in agreement. It was shown in this study, Nigeria as the most common ancestry within the US, the French Caribbean and the British Caribbean. This is despite nearly half of the slaves who landed in the United States coming from Senegambia, that is Gambia, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Senegal, and West Central Africa. Democratic Republic of Congo and Angola. A considerable number of the remaining half had their origins in Ghana as well as Ivorian Coast. That is the Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire of today. So the overrepresentation of Nigeria ancestry reported was found to be a result of the later intra American slave trade between the British Caribbean and the mainland Americas. The intra American trade, which was an inter colonial trade involving over 11,000 slave voyages within the Americas, stretched as far as Boston to Buenos Aires and also Atlantic, the Pacific littorals. So the intra-American trade record showed that why the transatlantic voyages were going on, slave traders transferred nearly 500,000 slaves throughout the Americas with most intra-American voyages originating in the Caribbean, as the research shows. And we have some vivid explanation with uh, some examples showing sites and places where uh, slaves were shipped and gathered for department and for departure. And we can see uh, from the traces of uh, research, Cape Coast uh, Caster and the Gulf of Guinea is one of such places in Cape Coast, Ghana, where enslaved people from across Africa were traded. That was some sort of a market as where slaves were being traded to be taken to the Americas. We can also see some facts. Though the British outlawed the slave trade in 1807 and started intercepting slave ships, the intra-American slave trade continued the intra-American slave trade voyages on record sailed until the 1840s as there was the slave trade continue in the US and between Spanish Caribbean colonies. The researchers also reported Senegambia under representation in the Americans such as in Northern uh, South America and Central America despite being the source of nearly half of the enslaved persons who handed at ports in the areas. So Senegambia has an underrepresentation as compared to Nigeria. That is why uh, we don't have so many uh, witnesses coming to testify they are from this 
Senegambia countries, but we have so many who are even trying to land in Nigeria and see what it looks like. I'm going to share their various comments with you to know what I'm talking about. But let us round up with the main facts and give you the better understanding of why it is so. As it is now, it was presumed to have resulted in reduced African ancestry in the population. A presumed higher mortality rate in the Americas among enslaved persons from Senegambia was also given a possible reason. Also in the study, the United States and the British Caribbean were found to have the highest African ancestry in the Americas. Previous genetic studies have also reported a lower proportion of Latin Americans with African roots compared to the proportion of African Americans in the United States. This is uh, despite a historical record shows that over two thirds of enslaved people who arrived in the Americas landed in Latin America, with less than 5% landing in mainland North America itself. This low representation was presumed to also be due to high mortality among enslaved people in Latin America and a high rate of integration between them and Native Americans resulting in reduced African ancestry in the population. As we have rightly seen from this angle, we have all the details being uh, broadcasted with it coming from the right source and the right research. You have all the right and you are free to keep your comment coming as others so that we can get to know more insight as we have seen it from others concerning this uh, video. It will be a pleasure to have them on the comment section as it's coming all the way so that we can get to have a full knowledge of what we are dealing with in this uh, topic. It's really a great show and we are hoping to see more interest coming as we move on to discover many of them. So now that is not all as we see another researcher proving to be on with some facts concerning the exploit for Africa. But that will not come now because we have other issues to look into. And we are going to look about the ancestry right, how you get to know if some other people are interested in knowing their ancestry DNA or their ancestry background. And we are also going to look at topics like ancestry verse 23 and me, Native American DNA result is ancestry DNA result testing accurate. Those questions are to be answered only in this uh, broadcast. And we are also going to look at why so many African Americans are interested in their African ancestry. It's really interesting to know why all those things they have to trace out and know where they are coming from. Why others doesn't. We're all going to see that happens as we move on. Now, let's see what happens as we are moving here. We are going to start with ancestry uh, verse 23 and me research. Ancestry verse 23 and me. Let's see what happens here as it goes on. Ancestry verse 23 and me. Which DNA testing kit is best for tracing your family roots? Here's how two popular DNA testing kits stack up in terms of cost, privacy, and result. Let's get a brief information about this. Now, we have it all in our 
show and we are looking up to share with you we say let's look about ancestry verse 23 and me ancestry verse 23 and me clearly shows how dna testing kit is best for tracing your family's roots and here's how the two popular dna testing kit stack up in terms of cost privacy and resort in case you don't know where to take on the resort here is where you can get it happen as we have in the bottom line the treasure practice of shifting through all family photos and sharing the stories of generations past is a way to keep memories alive <laughs> as well as learn about your family history but some may not have access to these uh, photographs and memories or may want to dive even deeper and turn to DNA testing services to build a more uh, complete picture of their family tree. Guys, as I promised you, we are going to look at the testimonials and the feedback from the different viewers from different parts of the world but before doing that we have to also look at how they have gotten this result that is one of the key factors we are sharing here how you can get your own dna result and we have one which is 23 and me so ancestry dna is subsidiary of ancestry.com and 23 and me are two popular resources available to help you learn about your family history both uh, required a saliva sample and analyze your saliva sample and analyze your dna to infer where your family originated from that is how the site is explaining the analysis can also or potentially detect relationships with other users based on their submitted samples with all this, you can get to know the real facts. In addition, the analysis can also provide wellness and health report with information on cancer risk, health, uh, predisposition, uh, predisposition, career status, and more. We try our both DNA testing kit uh, here how to tell which one is best for you. And that is why we said, let us first look at this uh, section of this video before we go to the commentary of the video to analyze and share with you the different testimonials best for family history information as we have gotten it uh, from this uh, section of the research ancestry dna says i tried the ancestry dna kit which cost about uh, 109 dollars after shifting uh, shipping at the mo at the time of publication and comes with a saliva collection chip and cap. I return back and a prepared return label box uh, to register the kits. I downloaded the ancestry app and scanned the barcode. That is somebody explaining from her experience on the side of the collection chip. You can register your kits online uh, too and just normally enter the number manually so when you make an account the app asks uh, for your consent on several items including consent to process your sample to store the sample of you one if you want the future testing and to participate in research so research include taking surveys and questionnaires that ancestry gna says it was used to attend to better understand human history and health. So we see why and what ancestry DNA taught some people. And that is how privacy and the complex war of genetics testings look like. And it continues. It declined consent to store the sample and participate in research because not everybody like to disclose their information as we see it. By so doing, let's get to see what the different commentaries from different individuals, different viewers look like. 
as I earlier said, some are positive, some are negative, but we are also going to see them all. We are going to look at them. So one person, one viewer says, I am 42% Nigerians. Most Africans I met have always said, I look Nigerians, which is crazy. I'm so happy about it. That is a viewer who is testifying and the viewer is happy that they could get their DNA test and discover they are 42% Nigerian. Another says, I got my DNA result back recently and had gotten 34 Nigerian, which I thought was super cool. It is higher than my other ethnicities. It's good I share with you so that you can get to look at what I'm talking about as well. Let me try to portray with you guys as we move on to see what I'm talking about concerning the DNA uh, test and the DNA and the different results. That is it, guys, as we are seeing. That is it as we are seeing. We read from the comment itself, directly from the comment. I'm going to see different commentaries, different testimonials concerning our topic of today. It's a she. She said, I got my DNA result back recently and I had 34 Nigerians, 34% Nigerians, which I thought was super cool. It is higher than my other ethnicities. And that is great. And people are so congratulating her. Nigeria is a country. And we have seen why I said there are positive and there are negative commentaries. As we see, there will always be some people who do who will never see good in what others are doing. So, and this is an example of how I'm sharing with you guys. Is it a problem? It is not a problem. More than likely, Igbo or Yoruba. These are also some commentaries complementing this uh, feedback. Right? These are also some commentaries complementing this feedback. So, another says, more than likely, Igbo or Yoruba, if you are a descent of a slave or in the diaspora. And she replied, exactly. We move on. He said, I will definitely look into more of my background. I'm excited to figure out all I can. That is also a compliment. Some exact Nigerian percentages I got, I'm actually 75% African, though that is also a testimony and a clear proof that we have gotten and we are on the track. Another says, I got my DNA result wiped back. I'm 50% Nigerian. Some of East African has popped up there also as well. And another says, I had mostly West African, 84%, but the rest was Middle East, Middle Eastern, European, North African, East African, Indian, Native American, and Asian. Makes sense being that my family is from New Orleans and the Caribbean. That is it, as we see from the comment. Another says, just learn I'm 34% Nigerian, but that's all I can find. I wish to go deeper and truly learn my direct ancestry timeline. Really sad. I don't know who I am. Still on the research, and we come back to testify. As we see it, still on the research, and we come back to testify. Let's see what others are saying concerning this same uh, topic. What testing company? Someone says, what testing company? And I will reply to that. That is why I said we are going to be replying to questions, and we are going to be reading uh, the different points of views of viewers. To, person, to, to, to that person asking what testing company, you can check on 23 and me because 23 and me is a testing company reliable for testing. And we have already discussed about that before getting at this point. 
Another says, I'm 51% Nigerian. Both my parents and their, their parents are Africans, Americans. I think me being a half Nigerian is crazy. I really want to learn the language and my culture, but there is over 300 tribes where to start. Where is she going to start? That is a bigger question, and we have gotten it how we got some replies, which is not necessary. How uh, we got another reply. Have you done 23 and me? That is uh, slightly a question, a, an answer to a question that was asked, which company they can take their own DNA test and another person have answers. If they have checked the 23 and me, it's where I found out I was half evil. That is it. That is what I was saying. I said they should check 23 and me. They don't give the exact tribe unless they are close to almost certain. Not everyone gets the ethnicities. Another person confirmed, same here, I'm 47. As it says, I wish, I wish the next move as Sub-Saharan Africa is to review what we learn about ourselves. First of all, the concept of tribe as brought uh, to us by colonialism was who we truly are. In many cases, those populations, those uh, tribes are in fact subgroups of the same nation. I invite you to listen to a Godia, a Kongni, a so Escosa and a Macunian, you will understand how the different foreign settlers hastily jump on the tribe tact. So that is another person explaining from different reactions concerning the ethnicity and the tribes. The issue is that the choices and the decisions they subsequently made from those errors affected boundaries and people's sense of self deeply to this uh, day. And that is his own point of view why we have gotten to this point where we choose to say it as what we understand, pay our understanding. We got another uh, feedback here. We say stripes, sub-Saharan, Nigerian, Ivor Ivorian, are not even words of an African language. Hell, even the word African isn't a continental native language. I mean, if you really want to get down to it, but I get what you are saying. It goes beyond creating boundaries that cause problems. But I think we need to take it a step further and get rid of all colonial slavery names put upon us but to truly understand all of this we need to go back to the start of modern western philosophy because it permits our society government ideology rules laws and politics now we get an order here which says i agree with you to put point that is still the same chain which is going on for this uh, same video the nature of consistencies the nature of consciousness is to categorize can't escape that so for me sub-saharan works uh, perfectly because it is scientifically true populations like me are mainly found below the sahel belt so i don't advocate uh, throwing the baby with the bad water so non-Africans were not motivated by imperialities or 19th century beliefs and did pioneering jobs for us. As we can see, we will definitely include them in the job at hand. Some go, same goes to Western philosophy. I think a school, school of thought can be a, of great value itself but turned so in the hands of dubious mind that is his own points of view as we move on i mean some non-africans that is still 
the same equation as we are moving. Another person debunked the fact, as he says, I disagree with you 1,000% on all levels. Sub-Saharan is a term given to us if you are a person of African descent. How is this a perfect word to describe you when we are the first people on earth? We are indigenous to Northern Africa as well when they have literally proclaim everyone in Egypt as of European descent. Disregarding the people of African descent as there we can see as for Western philosophy. I don't think you really know how it pertains to African people of if you did, you wouldn't agree with it. So Western uh, ideology is at the center of and it's the driving force of western society which is what the world bases its system on that is their own points of view as we keep on to find more uh comments and more reactions now we get it here as they say uh thank you ancestry dna has reported my sister and i to be 30 percent nigeria and less as any of the other west africans I appreciate all the analysis of the diaspora. That is a comment. And we say, another says, I'm 40% Nigerian here. My Nigerian best friend calls me Damilo. And that is it. As we get it, I just got my ancestry result back and I'm 47.6% Nigerian. Can I just say I'm Nigerian from now on? People of color in America are the only one without a real they categorize us by skin color that is a confirmation from being a Nigeria from a DNA and someone says I am also 47 percent Nigerian someone say I don't know about you but I really call myself Igbo America those are commentaries from different peoples who have gotten their DNA result to be showing they are from nigeria i'm 42 percent nigerian from the Igbo tribe and i tell people i'm nigerian that is this hey has anyone heard about uh this new bill uh, as we see those are destruction commentaries as we can see are you familiar uh, from the virginia north area that is what we got at commentary there are a lot of them there are a lot of them, there are a lot of them, there are a lot of them. I am 43% Nigeria. I pray that one day I make it to Africa, more importantly, Nigeria. And that is it, as we have different points of views, different analysis, uh, very interesting and enlightening information. Thanks for uh, that is it. As we have gotten it here, guys, since 28 percent of the slaves that came uh, to the americans were from nigeria it's not shocking a lot of us black americans like myself have nigerian blood and that is it i am 29 percent nigerian i can so far only trace back my ancestor to being born in africa but not quite we have gotten the exactitude of what <laughs> the reply of this video look like so now you watching what is your own take what is your own points of view concerning all the facts about this video and what you have seen concerning what others have containing the same topic so we are going to take on with another question that came up during this video in the comment section attached and we saw it uh, in one of our commentary which says so with that question why do so many Congolese show up as Nigerians on DNA tests and what about Krumen Mendika they also show up as Nigerian on DNA tests. 
It is just European senses failure to distinguish between certain groups or is every African in Central West African a Nigerian? That is a bigger question and we got the exact reply from someone who have also researched after researching. It says DNA sample sizes are rather small for those countries you have mentioned as compared to Nigeria, which have some sort of number, some great margins when and during the transatlantic slave trade. You get it right? So now we are going to see uh, why so many African Americans are interested in their African ancestry. Why is it so? That is the greatest uh, questions as we are going to look at it now. It will be important because uh, people often ask this question in the comment section. And I said I have to answer it. And here is it. Uh, only a little as a child growing up in the 70s. As that is a testimony from our research as we have gotten it explained by someone who feels that nostalgic uh, feelings. I was strongly influenced by the reclamation of our ancestry. We celebrated uh, Kwanzaa, Mordiskins, and Kofis, a sprinkle Swahili into our everyday life. Have African names sprinkled throughout our family? That is a question. I went to a school that made it a point to teach us these things, as well as the great history of black people in America, my parents taught us as well. So we celebrated the achievement of these great people who held being American closer to its best ideas through education, politics, science, you name it. We have always been there excelling. Also, around the time that I was growing up, black music and entertainment became a bigger part of American culture much of black American began embracing our natural looks, our fair and our swap. So now the great migrations, as we have always known, to be the motto, to be the turning point, to be the landmark, so far as this question is concerned, saw African Americans spread our influence and culture throughout the country. So, there were several key moments where uh, this culture broke through and into the American mainstream, the mortal years, the jazz age, the blacks, plantation, film era, and the biggest one so far, the hip hop era. When we talk to entertainment as African having, African Americans having the African ancestry. So I was still living in New York when this era broke uh, through. What is a blue Sogahi Ga, a UFO uh, Rosane, Sword and Paper, greatest rap group of all time, fight as we see it and break dancing. What an incredible art form. So we took sport from somewhere and somewhat interesting niche activity for white people to an existing global phenomenon. End zone dances and on few celebrations are a joy to watch, unless they are doing it against our and your team. B-ball players, that is the basketball players, from the Iceman to Dr. J to Jordan to LeBron make this game exciting with their swag and their creativity, two girls from the typically resource deprived black area rose to become beautiful, shining stars in tennis. What does they have to do with the question? That is a bigger issue. All these narrations, what does this have to do with why so many Africans? Americans are interested in their African ancestry. Why? 
So if we have given uh, all of this narrative, is to tell you why. So my love for us as a people is rooted in our American experience. I respected and recognized our African diaspora roots, my uh, African uh, Barbados, US, but I am in Hawaii and have nothing but reverence uh, for our Black American culture. So our historic roots uh, in constantly pushing Americans to become the great democracy that it thinks it is our incredible uh, contributions to so much of American culture. We created American music, culture, spirituals, uh, blues, beggar jazz, rock and roll country. Our music and swap is revealed around the world as the music of the unhealed, unheard. The music of change, just plain fun. We have changed the planet for the bed. So our culture and history is so full, so rich that we have only just begun to scratch the surface of it. There are stories and influences that we don't even know yet and they are still to come and you say we love us uh, because of how uh, we survive and sometimes thrive in a country that we build without pay appreciations and recognition because of how we consist uh, constantly continually fight against the white uh, you know has always been the, the root of africans and americans issues and continues to be all of our american not just black people so our struggle has seen it off as this level as we have gotten the reason why so many africans americans are interested in their african ancestry is because of memories it's because of souvenirs a lot of happenings that have come across their mind that have traversed their staying on earth, it hasn't been uh, just for fun. It has been for a lot, which we have gotten it to be the way it is. So guys, it's not that easy for it to be people not to have the sentiment of their origin. That is what they are doing. If you can get it right, you know what I'm talking about. A nostalgic feeling that can only be fulfilled by tracing it back to back to see where you come from and that is how some get to know their origins from the different sources we have provided here 23 and me and so on we have gotten it and people are still coming and testifying how they have gotten uh, to that uh, level of making it happen with those uh, results. And we have appreciated those who have shared their points of view in this uh, video to give us the strain to do more research and come up with something tangible. There are so many questions and we are going to be answering them bit by bit to get to the real surface of all uh, the questions being answered here so it's a uh, it's somehow as we have gotten only few to displace now as an african american many have known where they come from and others haven't as we were seeing it bear an explanation and how things have happened to be till now. So it's a great deal why so many African Americans have Nigerian ancestry. And we also look at uh, questions such as Native Americans uh, DNA result. And people also ask, is ancestry DNA result testing accurate? Is ancestry um, is ancestry DNA result?
DNA result accurate. And we have gotten um, some facts about this information. As we have seen the question, the question is here, is ancestry DNA result testing accurate? Is ancestry DNA result testing accurate? And we are going to talk about the, accu the testing accuracy and the in ancestry DNA. So your ancestry DNA test results are the product of multi-state processes. First, your DNA is measured or read in the lab. This lab processes generates raw DNA data. The raw data is then analyzed to generate your ancestry DNA result. There is no single measure of ancestry DNA test accuracy. Instead, the accuracy of each step can be measured independently. So we are answering the question as we have already posted accuracy of the reading of the DNA test. Reading your DNA is a first step in generating your ancestry DNA result. Accuracy is very high when it comes to reading each of the hundreds of thousands of positions or makers in your DNA. With current technology, ancestry DNA has on average an accuracy rate of over 99% for each marker tester. So it's accuracy from the explanation as we give it to you. 99% accuracy. So accuracy of regions in your ethnicity estimated. When you take an ancestry DNA test, your test result will include an ethnicity estimate. Part of this is an estimate reported as a percentage of where your ancestor lived hundreds of years ago, as far back as around 1,000 years back. An example will be 8% Italy, which reflects the amount of your DNA that has been inherited from the Italian ancestors. That is just an example. So ancestry DNA determines this part of your ethnicity estimate in two steps the first step is to collect the dna of people whose family has a long history in particular part of the world this group is called the reference panel and right now 43 different regions in the world are represented the second part of the process is to compare your dna bit by bit to the dna of people from the 43 uh, different regions in the reference panel to see which groups dna your dna most resembles for example it's if 10 uh, percent of your dna looks most similar to the dna of people from france ancestry dna we assign 10 percent of your ethnicity estimate to france that is how it works so ancestry DNA uses a number of different methods to determine the, uh, the accuracy of this part of your ethnicity estimate. One method looks at how where ancestry DNA predicts the ethnicity estimate of people with non-ethnicity. So for example, it looks at how where it works on people from the reference panel who should uh, theoretically come back from 100% of a certain ethnicity. In terms of particular regions in an ethnicity estimate, the accuracy we, as in true for method used by other testing companies, depend upon the region, population, and the granularity of the predictions. So, if the ancestry DNA restricts itself to the continental level, Europe, Asia, Africa, it is extremely accurate 
as ancestry DNA drills down further into more specific regions. The accuracy will tend to go down. So it is a balancing act between accuracy and granularity. That is what we have gotten if the ancestry DNA testing is accurate. Ethnicity estimate, as we can see, is also part of the deal. So accuracy of the co of communities in your ethnicity estimate. How does it work? In addition to the regions with percentages, ancestry DNA can also find communities in your ancestors and where your ancestors belong to using our pretended and patented genetic communities. Technology has evolved and we have known it. This method can tell you where your ancestors uh, may have lived in more recent times and how come people in these communities might have moved around the globe over the same time period. The patented uh, technology uses ancestry DNA and DNA database, the largest consumer DNA database in the world, and its vast ratio true of millions of family trees. So customers can identi uh, identify how confident ancestry DNA is in uh, assigning uh, them to a community by following these steps go to the community and for information you know there will be one of three categories very likely likely and possible when you get these categories you are already uh, approaching a way to getting it done and you can get a true uh, answer to what you are looking for so to those asking is ancestry uh, DNA result testing accurate? I hope you have gotten the answers. And the answers is clear. It is accurate, 99% accurate. So you shouldn't have any doubt again whether it is accurate or not. I think what you can do now is to move on and do what is possible for your own testing. A community level as possible means there is a chance uh, uh, of this community as they were on the edge of being included in the first place. So accuracy of DNA uh, matching. DNA matching is an hope uh, in future of ancestry DNA. That's result in which we identify people you may be related to and how you may be related to them for example there may be a second to third uh, cousin as we have already known it so the accuracy of ancestry dna is extremely high for seeing if two people are related at the third or fourth cousin and closer level this high level of accuracy is based on the method by which relatives are found sharing long Segment of DNA result. This is uh, only possible if people have had a recent common ancestor. From there, we can get to uh, a clear picture of what it is all about so that we can get uh, enough answers when we are looking for something in the course of research so guys it's really interesting as uh, we have seen uh, so many feedback uh, from different people from different countries bringing almost similar result when it comes to this topic and we also have some sort of uh, questions to look at uh, native american dna result what does it look like when we talk about native american dna result is it something that we have to talk about that we have been asked that question 
ancient DNA confirmed Native American deep roots. And we are going to look into it as we have already uh, gotten the question up on board to digest it and bring to you some little information concerning it. So indigenous American DNA, having Native American ancestors or indigenous American DNA does not make someone a Native American tribal citizen. That is what you have to know. There are differences between a person's genetic, uh, political, and cultural identities. Native American tribal members are citizens of their nations. This is a political and cultural identification rather than a genetic identification. Similar to being a citizen of any uh, other country, in the United States, there are more than 750 federally recognized tribal nations and over 60 state recognized tribes. There are also some regionally recognized tribal communities as we get to know it through research. So individual tribal nations determine the criteria for tribal citizenship. To determine tribal citizenship, tribal nations determine the legitimacy and the strength of someone family connections. For many tribal nations, this means tracing a person's lineage back to someone on tribal citizenship rules from the late 19th centuries to 20th centuries, like the Dwarves rules. Sometimes a percent of a blood called blood quantum is also used. So blood quantum is not how tribal nations have uh, historically determined who is a tribal member. Rather, blood quantum was created and later used by the United States government to dispose Native American people of their lands and civil liabilities and civil liberties as well. It was not until the Indian Rec Organizations Act of 1934 that the United States began requiring tribal nations to use blood quantum to determine tribal citizenship. So now, it is also important to recognize that some people have strong cultural or family connections to a tribe without being a tribal citizenship. There are many reasons for this, including issues of parental consent, paper genus, uh, people in this position may be considered Native American because they have strong cultural and family connections. So Native Americans ancestors, as we are going to discuss, claiming to be Native American because of distance or unverifiable Native American ancestors contradicts a tribal nation's right to sovereignty. In fact, so many people force, uh, falsely claim to have uh, a Cherokee great grandmother that is being deemed an anthropological phenomenon. This doesn't mean that the presence of Native American ancestors is not an important feature of someone's family history. However, there's a, a crucial difference between the claims I have Native American in lineage and I am Native American. Two differences. So what happens? What happens when someone says, I'm indigenous American. Then now we are going to look at it as per the indigenous American DNA. Although the criteria may differ between nations, no tribal nations uh, considers indigenous American DNA to be a legitimate claim to citizenship. In fact, this stems uh, from traditional beliefs that kinship uh, network family connections not ethnicity or dna determine who is native american so 
why indigenous American DNA cannot be used uh, to determine tribal citizenship. It can be vital in assisting Native American people who were separated from their tribal communities through uh, forced adoption or the resi uh, residential school system. So the Association for American Indian Affairs report that as many as one third of all Native American children were separated from their tribal communities between 1941 and 1967. An Indian child separated from their tribal communities even after it was uh, signed into law. Today, Native American children still make up a disproportionate part of the U.S. Ad, uh, adoption and foster care system. So DNA could help Native Americans affected by adoptions or foster care re-establish their family connections for reasons that include tribal sovereignty, ancestry, and does not break down DNA results by tribe, but we do provide an ex an approximate geographical region, indigenous American. So that is it, as we can see, when we talk about the indigenous Americans. Results are not broken down by tribe. Why the indigenous American regions may not appear in your ethnicities? Those are different reasons given when it comes to Native American DNA results. When you get it from this end, you know where you're coming from and you have uh, to identify them and get on from that uh, point. So guys, uh, that is it as we have seen it uh, from this angle, from different points of view concerning how and why so many African uh, Americans have Nigerian ancestry DNA proven by and tree and me ancestry DNA result. So keep your comment in the comment section. If you are coming for justifications, even if you have questions, keep it in the comment section as orders so that we get to discover more facts when it comes to the ancestry DNA result. It was a pleasure to be with you guys. As you can see, we can break it down here and we are going to be back with more questions, more research and more feedback from different people who have carried out their research to know where they are coming from. So by so doing, stay blessed as we move on to keep 